Jeff Colosimo and I just authored a new book called Using Curriculum Mapping uh, and Assessment to Improve Student Learning. Well, that's a long title, so let me just describe a little bit about what we're trying to do with the book. The first is that we realize that there are many books that have been written on curriculum mapping, but there aren't any so far that have been written that really talk about the need for the integration between assessment data and curriculum mapping data. So we've taken our first uh, orientation to that, and what we're trying to do is describe, first of all, what is it that a district really needs to do for school improvement? You know, every district has to have a school improvement plan. So the question now is, what really helps them most in terms of a school improvement plan? And it's our thesis in the book, first of all, that what you really need to do is you need to first understand what are the key ingredients to a school improvement plan. And what we're talking about is that the first is you need to have data. People have been talking about a data-driven decision-making. What we prefer to think about is that it's data-informed and not driven. And of course, we're all driven enough anyway, so I think that that really is, is a way of thinking about it. So what we're doing is we're saying a data-informed decision-making process is built through a culture that looks at data from the perspective of both curriculum as data and that's why mapping becomes so important, because mapping really allows you to see curriculum as data. And then in addition to that, to think about assessment as data and to really consider what's necessary in terms of assessment to have sufficient information to really inform you. So we look at the question of not only the state tests, although everyone is certainly driven by the state tests, but we also look at the question of the information that you get from the state is then coordinated and correlated with information you might get with local assessments, such as benchmark assessments, that help you to look in a more quarterly or a more regular way how students are doing, rather than waiting until the end of the year. So we say that the data that you're looking at from the assessment perspective is rich. In addition to that, of course, there's qualitative data that people look at, such as looking at student work, having portfolios. There are many ways that you can really define assessment. For the limits of a book, we've really looked at it from the perspective of both benchmark and local assessments, as well as state assessments and standards-based assessments. So we say that really, to have a good school improvement plan, you need to have a process for examining the data that you receive and making certain that the data that you have is well integrated, and that it is well aligned with your standards. So that seems like a first step. And then the next thing that we talk about is the idea that once you have that, you then have to have a process for dialogue. Because it's one thing to say we have data, it's another thing to use it. And we find that in many of the districts, or certainly I do in the districts that I work with, I find that although people have the data, they think that there's a simple step. Now that we know what the data is, now we know what to do. And I'm asking people to use an inquiry-based approach instead of jumping to conclusions, to be thoughtful about the data that you get, to not assume that you know exactly what it is that has to happen next. So in order to do that, you have to have a culture that's willing to take that data and transform it into information. So the distinction I'm making is that the data is the hardcore numbers. It's the statistics. It's what you're getting. But then that has to translate into information. Are there patterns? Are there trends? As you look at your information, you change it from numbers to bar graphs to pie charts. And since I've been working with technology quite a bit, and since in Performance Pathways, where we have actually done this work, we've taken all of the data that comes in from state and from benchmark assessments, and we've now translated it into graphs, pie charts, and reports that districts get. So we brought some samples of those reports and the ways that you can translate data into reports so that you're now able to say, okay, I understand this. This now tells my teachers and my administration, my central office, that if we're going to be informed, we have to really look at the patterns and the trends that this information shows us. We have to look at it from a longitudinal perspective. We have to look at it not immediately. We have to understand, is it a cohort of students? We have to think about all the things that we have to consider in order to really take that data and give it meaning. So we've moved from data to information,
to finally what I believe we as educators do best, which is making sense out of it all, giving it meaning. And so to give it meaning, we have to learn how to dialogue with one another, we have to learn how to process that information, and we have to learn how to really make use of it to really improve what we're doing with our students.